Good morning, Rocky Mount. We are so glad that you are here with us today. As you can tell, this is a different type of Sunday. We now have a restart or a reboot Rocky Mount committee that's uh, going on right now. And one of the things we wanted to do was to get totally out of the church and have it cleaned from top to bottom. So that's why you're seeing us outside this week. Uh, you're going to get an original sermon from me, and there's a reason for that. But I want you to let you know that when you see the praise team in a little bit, it's sort of going to be like a, a best of. Um, they've gone back and found some of the best things they've done in the last couple of years. And those are the songs that we're going to be worshiping with. Now, we wanted to do that with my sermon, and we went back and looked, but there was none thing like a best of. So I had to do this originally, and hopefully years from now, this may be a, a best of. So let's let you know what's going on. Thank you so much for those of you that are giving online. You have given this church stability, and you've allowed us to still continue to do ministry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And for those of you that are with our youth tonight, 6.30 Zoom, Tammy at RockyMountChurch.com. Hope you guys are great this morning, and let's start our worship. We lift up the name of God uh, in the presence of our enemies to cast out the devil and allow God to work in our lives. So we raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah to fight for me I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise and death is defeated the king I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah and I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I fear you lost your hold on me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Yeah, sing a little louder. 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 In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder. My weapon is a melody. 
I'm no longer a slave to fear So I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear Yes, I am a child of God. Oh, shame is a prison as cruel as a grave. Shame is a robber. Come and take my name Oh, love is my redeemer Lifting me up from the ground Love is a power Where my freedom song is found In oh, grave Gonna hold my body down Trump 
Rocky Mount, I guess you can tell we are doing something totally different this Sunday, and um, I guess it's very casual because I've got on my fine Sasquatch shirt on, so uh, just bear with us today. want to let you know what's going on. We do have a committee at the church that is, uh, this... that's my dog. If you hear him in the background, he's actually in the lake playing with sticks right now. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit of a different sermon today, um, but just wanted you to know we do have a committee, and that committee is a startup committee. I don't know when we're going to be able to go back. I hope it's so soon, but they are trying to get everything ready and in place for when we can open up the doors, and i tell you what, I can't wait. So one of the first steps that we're doing this week is actually having the first real cleanup of the church having uh, folks come in and get all the germs out get everything ready so when we do actually get ready it won't be as hard to do the final prep so we're excited about that and uh, I'm excited about today uh, today we're going to continue our series and we're going to talk about staying positive how do you and I stay positive how do we have confidence in what we do in our lives. One of the most difficult things that I endure in terms of being positive is dealing with myself because I am not a person that is so secure all the time. Now, I've told you in the past I dealt with so many things and one of those things was a weight problem. It started when I was 12 years old and uh, I went from skinny Jamie to big boy Jamie very quick. And it wasn't just that. I had rosacea. So my cheeks 
were bright red all the time. So here was this little chubby red cheeked boy and every time he went outside and played or went to PE, let's just say it wasn't good with the ladies. So I developed a sense of humor. And my whole deal was if I could make people laugh or I could be the class clown or if I could be a smart aleck, then that's the way I connect with people. But when it came down to it, that's how I dealt with my insecurities. Now, I don't know about you and your insecurities. I don't know when they started. Maybe maybe some of you had acne problems and you were so insecure about who you were and what you looked like that it was hard to let the real person come out. Maybe some of you had summer teeth. Like some teeth are, some of them are over here and some of them are over here when you were growing up and you were so insecure. Now, I am 48 years old, and it still doesn't take long to trigger my insecurities. I wonder if that's a Jamie issue, or a God issue, or a Jamie and the enemy issue. Because for some reason, when all it takes many times just a, a, funny, a funny look, or an awkward comment, or, you know, an awkward moment, that all of a sudden, that 14-year-old chubby red-cheeked boy comes out. Um, you know, I don't know where you are. I know where he is. I don't know where you are with your insecurities. Um, you know, I've, I've even dealt with that as a pastor. I remember one of the times, I, first time I ever preached a revival, I went down to Charlotte or the Waxhaw area and I preached and this lady came out and she just smiled and shook my hand and said, nice try. Now you want to talk about insecure? Um, there, there it was and it came out and I lost confidence in myself. And I think a lot of times insecurities manifest itself in different ways. Um, I think three different ways are the main ways. The number one are the people pleasers. Now, that was me. I wanted to be that yes person. I wanted to be that person that made everybody happy. I wanted to say, I'll do anything you want for you to like me. And that was my issue. But then there's also people that deal with the insecurities that are the fishers. And I've actually got this too. I go home and ask my wife, hey, how was the sermon today? Even if I knew it was bad, what was I doing? I was fishing for a compliment. Or you'll see someone and they'll post a picture of themselves and saying, having a bad day today. All they're doing is saying, hey, look at me. Tell me how pretty I am. Tell me how good I am. Tell me something's going to, to be okay. Now, my favorite, not really, are the one-uppers. Those are the name droppers. Now, the way they deal with their disability in terms of insecurity is they brag. They love to tell you who they know and what they've done. And You go home and you say, well, you know what? Um, I was so proud of myself and I felt God's presence. I read two chapters of the Bible this morning. Well, the one upper usually says, well, I read three chapters in Hebrew. No, the actual term, word, language, Hebrew. You see, they've always got to justify their existence. Um, here's the whole deal. When you're insecure about yourself, you're not only feeling bad about yourself, you're robbing who Christ made you to be. And you're missing out on what God has in store for you. Insecurities keep us from obeying God which is so, so important. It, it makes it so we don't follow our own dreams. So this morning, I want to do three short points. How in the world do you and I become confident in who we are? And here's a little hint. It has nothing to do about you. And that's where the enemy has tricked us for all these years. So here's the first point this morning. Um, we need to understand that we don't need more self-confidence. 
what we need is more confidence in who God is and who we are in God. In the message, it says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. It says, forget about self-confidence because it is absolutely useless. What it says is cultivate God's confidence. So there's a big difference between me being confident and me being confident in who God is and wrapping my identity around that. Because if I wrap my identity around myself and my own confidence, all I have to do is read scripture and find out that's not going to work. Jeremiah in chapter 17 said, I have to deal with a person that is deceitful every single day. Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 26, my flesh is weak. And even Paul he says, my behavior is so inconsistent. Romans chapter 7. But then there's David. If there's anyone that should not have confidence in who they are, it should be David because he did a lot of bad things. But here's what he said in Psalm 57 from the New Living Translation. My heart is confident in you. He didn't say my heart's confident in myself. He says, my heart is confident in you, God. My heart is confident. No wonder I can sing your praises. So, folks, we've got to understand that it's not about me being confident. It's about our confidence in who God is. So, I want you to understand some truths that go along with this idea of confidence. And the first one is this. Understand that God is always for you. It's fact. It's the truth. And we need to live it. My God is always for me. Now, I don't know about you when I was young and maybe I was going to different churches, maybe different, hearing different types of theological ideas on who God is and what God is about. I always believed sometimes that God was out to get me. That God was just waiting for me to make that step because I'd heard all these sermons about fire and brimstone and what hell was about and, and God was just after me. I know now as a parent that's not who God is because I truly believe that God is like a parent. Do you really think that God is that way with his children? Do you sit at home and look for ways? Just look for ways to discipline your children. Are you looking for what they haven't cleaned up or what they haven't done? Now, maybe your kids feel that way. But in all reality, that's not what you're out for. All you want for them is to be blessed and to grow in a proper way and be confident in, in who they are. So I think we have to understand that. Um, God's not out to get us. God is out to bless us. Are we letting God bless us? In, in Romans chapter 8, Paul says this, If God is for us, then who can be against us? Well, I've been reading that scripture for so wrong, so long, so wrong. It starts out, it says, if God is for us. Well, something I never noticed is it's not a question mark at the end of that first point. If God is for us, Paul is not questioning if God is for us. Paul is making a statement. God is for us. What would happen if I started making my decisions and my actions and my words all around the mantra in my life that God's for me? I think it would change a lot of the things and how I do and, and how I act. I've always been that people pleaser. And I think early on in my Christian life, that's the way I was trying to do and trying to be for God. I was always seeking the approval of God. And now I understand I had it all wrong. I am living out of the approval of God. There's a big difference. You don't have to seek for the approval of God. You have the approval of God. And that's why we've got to understand how blessed we truly are. 
And that should change our mindset. I want you to know, if you're wanting to get out of debt, God's for you. If you're wanting to start a new business, God is for you. If you want your marriage to get better, then God is for you. If you want to have better relationships, then God is for you. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, it says this, So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings us. So don't throw away the confidence. Don't throw away the trust and the faith that you have in God because that is a huge reward in our lives. So that's number one. God is always for me. Number two, understand that God is the, in the business of helping us. God is in the business of helping us. In Hebrews chapter 13, it says this, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, and I will not be afraid. God's telling you, I've never left you, and I never will. Not even when you did those things, not even when you were that person, not even what you did yesterday. I've never left you. I'm not only for you, I am with you. Where do you feel insecure? Or where do, you, where do you feel unsecure in your life? And do you know that God is for you? Do you know that God wants to help you? Some of you are facing really hard times right now. And if there's any advice I could give to you is this. Just remember. Has God been there in the past? I mean, truly look back at what God has done and how God has interacted in your life and, and ask that question, has God been there? Ask yourself, really? Has God been there? And if you're true and you're honest and you believe that God is real, then you'll come to the conclusion that yes, God was there. And God is still there. In Psalm 46, 1, it says this, God is our refuge and strength. But here's the key. An ever-present help in trouble. Ever-present. Not leaving. Always sustaining. So number one, God is for me. Number two, God is always with me. And number three, God's still working with me. That's what you and I is, is especially as Wesleyans, people that b believe in, in grace and walking in God and coming closer to God, God is still working on all of us. But Satan always asks us the question, how in the world could God use somebody like me? In Philemon 1.6, it says this, Be confident in this, that God who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God's working. Are you allowing God? Or are you building up blocks to be obstacles as fast as God can take them down? Now, you may be dealing with a lot of doubt in your life right now. Maybe uh, it's just that nagging habit that you can't overcome or maybe it's that you've been neglecting God this whole time. But I want you to know this. God's not done with you yet. God is not done with you yet. God is still working. Believe in God. I want to ask that you have more self-confidence in who God is in your life. And if there's anything that you get out of this sermon today, I hope it's spiritual swagger. Because you are a child of God. He is for you. He is with you. And He is not done with you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Side my grave with tears.
still on your face And I heard you say my name My night was turned to day She came I knew
right, Rocky Mount, thank you so much for joining us online. Please make sure that you share. And uh, we just want to get this out to anybody that can listen. We have had so much feedback and response from people that we've never met before. I had one interaction online this week that really warmed my heart. It's a couple that uh, I've never met. And they are later on in life. And they found Rocky Mount right here online. And they want to be part of the church family. And if that doesn't bless your heart, if that doesn't make you realize that God can work in the presence of his people, but God can work virtually online, then I don't know what else to say to you. Because God's spirit, it moves. And it doesn't matter what it moves through, it will come through. So I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for you. Hope you have a great week. God bless. And then sings my soul, my Savior God, to